Hello my Sock Universe to a slightly <laughs> compacted review. I decided due to the Premier League having only four games, me only having seen one important game from the Eredivisie and Ligue 1 taking a break because of the Coupe de France, let's smash those two together. And then UEFA also delivered a verdict that neatly combines the, you know, the two types of videos, Premier League and Ligue 1 uh, Eredivisie. That it all makes sense. I am wearing my uh, my now favorite Ajax away jersey. I'm really, really, I really waiting for the current Ajax home to go on a cheaper price. Hopefully, in the Ajax do like this one went. Well, that's a different story. Yeah. So I have here a background of three leagues. This hasn't happened so much, but I have only teams up there that actually did play this weekend. Which, yeah, I have uh, seven teams from the eight that are in the Premier League. I also need leads in many ways. So I would say let's start first with the stuff that kind of combines, although this was the last thing in a way to happen. Second to last, because there's a little uh, development that I still can't put in. Uh, UEFA came down with a ruling that uh, Stadren should be awarded the win against Spurs, a 3 0 win. Um, which means that Spurs are eliminated from the Conference League uh, and Vitesse Arnhem is gonna move on and playing against Rapid Vienna. Um, so uh, I think it's an interesting and an unavoidable verdict. I know this can, can, can be appealed. I know there's financial stuff where Spurs could appeal it, but to, to be honest, when I look at their schedule and the games they have to make up, it might actually not hurt them a lot uh being eliminated from the conference league because i think it's not a competition that they value overall all that much um it also meant that with all the results a, a few changes happened in the favorites for the europa league that i'm putting up there as well with roma still remaining favorites but leicester now ahead of start rennen feyenoord because feyenoord as we'll see lost this this week even as at psv there's a slight uh movement and then yeah pauk moves in in 20 because spurs are dropping out okay i would say we'll start in the premier league in a round that only had four games but what games they were in many ways and it's very um interesting i think that the top three teams all could play although chelsea really didn't want to play uh i was happy to watch both north games with the north london teams because i was actually th uh, entertained especially by the second second game i found the first half of our leads against arsenal also entertaining however arsenal very you know after the game being rather even maybe leads even having some chances you could see that arsenal is the better team and as soon as Martinelli made it 1-0, I had the feeling there's only one winner. The question is, uh, how big of a scoreline will it be? Well, it got a big scoreline because at the half, they were already up by three with Martinelli scoring a brace and Bukayo Saka getting a, thir a third one. Uh, Shaka probably had to be sent off. There was something like, like that. Then a penalty was awarded to uh, Leeds late on and then Smith Rowe. Uh, assist by Udegaard makes it 4-1 and Arsenal I've said it before say it again they are absolutely trending in the right direction which actually now reminds me since this is officially I mean there are so many makeup games that it's really hard to call, call the way I mean at the moment we have only 44% of all the games played which is something I'm adding now to the tables in the stats cast uh, but as soon as kind of a 50% mark is reached I want to see the yeah, other is kind of the half a point and maybe maybe do it all or or, or did it this week for the Premier League. I will put out a separate stats cast where you can see actually performance graphs uh, over the first few months of all the teams. And you can definitely see that Arsenal start trending in the right direction. They have been putting uh, together a good string of results and it actually shows. I think I, Arsenal potentially could challenge for a top four. I don't quite see them top four yet but i see them definitely top six and if they can can can, can, can continue like that then good form and you know if let's say united does not pick up under rangnick could very well be that arsenal uh pips everyone else to the fourth spot but it's still early to say so but yeah it, it was a positive change uh chelsea as i said didn't want to play uh at all at wolves um and yeah that's how they played i mean uh yes var 
uh, are shocked of a goal goal for Wolves in a terrible display where I think both teams had one shot on goal and that was that. So yeah, uh, completely different for Manchester City who are, I think they are now kicking into this next gear as they did last season. Um, as you will see, I mean, I looked at this performance graph. Uh, Manchester City has been kind of plodding ar uh, along and as of late, they have been stringing results together and slowly, slowly, slowly separating themselves a little bit from the rest. And I, they are... A team that I think it plays at the moment at a different level than everyone else in the Premier League. And it is kind of so deceiving because, you know, it's not a team that I necessarily want to... I don't, I don't know why I, I, I want to watch or it doesn't excite me as much, but they are just good. And... Uh, I cannot say, say much more. I mean, you have the best coach. You have a great team. You don't even have a striker, but you still keep 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 scoring laws, of course. And I think that's why I don't want to watch them because most of the games are rather one-sided. So um, that kind of kills it for me. It's also helped if Newcastle continues schoolboy defending, like on the first goal by Ruben Dias. That was just awful. How they are uh you know relying on each other and no one has each other's back in in a way the goal by Cancelo needs to also be uh marked as one great goal and yeah Cancelo is getting even better and I cannot even understand why um Guardiola thinks that this was the worst first half in the end it's a clear 4-0 and as I said I think it will be hard for other teams to catch City at this moment uh it will come down to the head to head However, the biggest game of the weekend and potentially of the season, although I want to say that probably the Liverpool City was um, a tad more better. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. The 2 2 between Spurs and Liverpool. What, what a game. This is one, one of those, you know, I started, I, I started, well, I, I, was, I had the headsets on uh, uh, to, list, to, to listen to it, and I'm. Uh, preparing something in in the kitchen and pulled pulled away because I feel already this game is going nuts. In the end, it's a two two draw, but all the storylines. I mean, the chances that Spurs missed is one thing to 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 be aggrieved by, and I think from that reason Spurs will think they should have deserved the win. I actually thought that overall Spurs were a little bit better. However, then the panel, the um, refereeing decisions, and again we talk about poor refereeing decisions. Yes, there should have been a penalty penalty uh, for Newcastle as well. I would say uh, again refereeing and as said in a video, video last week uh, the refereeing standard in the Premier League is rather poor I heard an interesting take on that that uh, it's because you get promoted too quickly because there's a shortage of refs in England because no one wants to get get, 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 get abused and, and, and you get paid a pittance like a 300 uh, pounds per game plus uh, travel expenses that does not uh, further anyone to go into refereeing. Uh, so I think this is something that has to be definitely addressed. Referees have to become pros and they should be paid quite well because let's face it, this is a very specialized job that no one wants to do. And for that reason, you should be paid a lot. And for all the abuse that you get, for all the decisions you're making, I mean, uh, we're giving our government the, the, the officials who are even more inept in many cases, uh, very high paid jobs referees i think will deserve a good job as well and at the same same time i also think that coaches should on average be paid more than players uh for a similar reason uh i think that's got something completely wrong but i think the uh all the fas need to especially in england because uh this current crop of english ref referees they are absolutely not good i'm not saying they're bad but they're not good and yes, it keeps the controversy up, and yes, it keeps us all discussing, but it also uh, keeps us getting away from the essence of the game. This was a great game. Back and forth, a tactical battle between two of the best coaches in Europe. So uh, this being marked by refereeing decisions, I find rather poor. I mean, if there were no refereeing decisions, we could have that definitely is this a lucky draw for Liverpool, because overall, hmm, maybe. However, I mean, yes, they, uh, Spurs had already chances uh, before Kane made it 1-0. Then Son and Dele Alli definitely, definitely need to make a thing go. Son maybe was a little bit hard, hard to get, but Dele Alli's shot, I mean, what a save by Allison. I mean, he just gets the hand on it. 
Uh, but he has to take the shots even better, I, I would say. But at that point, Spurs already should have been down a player. Because what Harry Kane uh, was doing to Ro uh, to Robertson, I it is an absolute clear stone wall red card that could have flipped the game already in Liverpool's favor. Uh, it actually flipped in Liverpool's favor then towards the end of the second half when uh, Diego Jota after Robertson assist where uh, the Spurs defense was com com completely unsorted. Heads, 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 heads it in. And then the next one where uh, it's to me it was a clear penalty. How Diego Jota is there and he's just by Emerson Royal just being pushed over. I and I don't even understand the argumentation by the ref. Uh, there was on German, on German Manuel Baum, former Augsburg coach, was kind of uh, saying, you know, um, for me it was maybe because he's in England, uh, you could let it go. No, for me it was not. This was a rather clear penalty, in my opinion, and yeah. That this didn't get to VAR, I, I actually do somewhat understand why it didn't go to VAR because it's a judgment call and VAR will not interfere there. But this is something where we have to adjust VAR for. Second half, not as great as the first, at least in the first few minutes. But you again, at the beginning, Spurs having many chances, Kane uh, missing from point blank range a few, a few, a few times because uh, he, he, he cannot drop the ball from a header. And then Robertson, uh, after there was another panel penalty call on Dele Ali, which I also thought, I mean, maybe that one I can live a little, a little bit more, but I also could have seen that this give, 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 give a penalty and the uh, unsourcedness of Spurs, um, Liverpool then used uh, to get a second goal where they also they didn't clear it and Robertson stays in the play, makes two steps out and, and you can see that the egg actually was out of play. He actually was give, 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 giving it up and then uh, comes back in again. Makes it 2-1, uh, however, uh, Allison, who had a great game, makes one horrible mistake, 2-2, two, two, son. And at that point, I really thought that Spurs are going to win it, but uh, Robertson, especially after Ro Robertson a few minutes later, sends his off by just chopping down uh, um, a player. But it didn't really come. So it ends in a 2-2 two, two that I think, uh, if you take the refereeing out, I think it was a great battle, it was a great game. It was one of those where you absolutely love the. I, I, you absolutely have to love the Premier League for that. So, uh, but it's also a result that very much plays into the cards of Manchester, Manchester City. It also means that Spurs at the moment on points per game are behind Arsenal. So uh, those are a few things. Again, you will see that in the stats test cast. Now the next round of games is of course the Boxing Day fixtures where there are nine games scheduled uh, in a rather rather dense um, affair. I have not made my mind because I actually want to take a little a little bit of break. I might egg, 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 actually make it before New Year's or, 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 or whatever to combine all these games because it's just gets a little bit too crazy but maybe not and also on boxing day i'm visiting family so i'm not sure how quickly i will get to this but they have decided now to not postpone uh you know there was talk to postpone the boxing uh to play ball boxing day, but then the next round both was on and play new new year's again uh which to me had would have made some sense but it's not happening and let's see how many of these games will actually happen in the way the situation is currently with all the COVID. So that's moving on from the Premier League. Um, in the Netherlands, we had the big clash. We had also, now here we are really now at halftime and we had the huge clash between Feyenoord and Ajax. Um, and to be honest, this was not much of a game. And the way that the goals came completely um, described the game. It was slow, there were no spectators. It was rather boring and then the first goal is an own goal by Sanesi. Uh, across the thing from Tadic where he just doesn't clear it well and goes back into the net uh, and it came out of absolutely nowhere and then the second goal was a penalty penalty that was yeah, um, you know, a, a stupid tripping by Nelson Feyenoord probably had a little bit the upper hand and, and, and that, but uh, Ajax get the uh, big win uh, however they don't finish first uh, at halfway point because PSV win at Valwijk so uh, at least we have that in the Eredivisie at the moment. Uh, Ajax still very much the favorite, the favorites, but at the moment after the half a point, they are one point behind PSV, but only four goals conceded. It, it, it's staggering uh, what Ajax are, are doing. And what the Dutch also do is they squeeze in one round from the spring, just before, so we get this also midweek 
Uh, but I don't think that the huge games. I mean, Herrn Vane against Feyenoord seems to be uh, one uh, that's more of a traditional duel in AZ against Groningen. Maybe Ajax play against City and PSV against Go Ahead Eagles. I honestly think this uh, should be rather straightforward games. But you know, then when you call them, they rarely are. Uh, we also have in the midweek, what the uh, halfway, the 19th round in League uh, um Bordeaux against Lille. Maybe uh, Lorient has to play at home PSG, Lyon against Metz, uh, Marseille against Reims. I am I am just I'm just looking look, looking for the big uh, names there. Monaco against the Rennes Pro is the game there to watch. However, uh, other not so uh, joyous news out of France. I have not seen anything from the Coupe Coupe de France. I, I usually get into it a little bit later. However, that was crowd trial when Paris FC played Lyon. Uh, seemingly a PSG fan insulted. Uh, you know. Annoyed the Lyon fans who then went completely berserk and yeah, again caught some uh, crowd violence game had to be called Kokoko Kolov. Now the Minister of Sport is getting involved and it's kind of blah 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 blah. Um, I still want to believe mostly it is as a case by case basis, but I actually thought I've saw, I heard an interesting take also that since the stewards have been laid off due to COVID now they're not coming back to a badly paid job and uh, so bad stewarding is also maybe one of the minor reasons or one of the reasons that we have so much crowd trouble in France at the moment. So yeah I was a whole lot of packed into this, this video but I wanted to do it in one video and I hope you uh, thought this was worth it. In any case let me know what you thought about all the action in these uh, three leagues. Uh, drop a line below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more uh, of these of videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.